Great, thank you very much. I'd like to call this meeting to order. May we have roll call, please, Ms. Shanley? Yes. Mr. Accomando. Present. Mrs. Barali. Present. Mrs. Lottarelli. Present. Mrs. Mahoney. Present. Mr. Quinn. Present. Mr. Laurentino. Present. Mrs. Ionello. Present. Mrs. Robinson. Here. Ms. Roloff. Okay. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 States of America and, America. and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, 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 with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been sent to all members of the Board of Education and to the Bergen Record in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231-1975. At this time, I would like to um, turn the meeting over to Ms. Shanley for the Superintendent's Report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming tonight for this special and very important emergency meeting of the Board of Education. We have a single item to discuss this evening, and that is how we are going to be able to continue to provide um, emergent care for our families in Saddlebrook after our uh, contract with Champions comes to an end on October 30th. Um, as I said at the last meeting, uh, I believe that was last Wednesday, how time passes so quickly, um, our first step in this process of severing our relationship with champions is to find an emergent plan to get us through so that parents do not lose childcare for their children. Um, and I also promised that the next phase would be um, probably after the new year, when we are into the budgetary process, that we would go out for another RFP um, and we would um, invite parents um, and interested members to join a committee to be part of that process for a long-term solution. Um, but right now we have to find a way to pick up the pieces after October 30th and try to do what we can to support our families during this time. And that is the sole purpose of this meeting this evening. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion? Um, for public comment on agenda items only, please. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we are open for um, public comment. While I read this wonderful paragraph, um, you go down to the bottom of the screen in the center. Uh, you should be able to get into, once you click on that, uh, to raise your hand. And then Mr. Mayor will be kind enough to call on you as um, you come in. Residents are requested to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. In the event it appears the public comment portion of the meeting may exceed 45 minutes. The presiding officer may limit each statement made by a participant to five minutes duration. Issues raised by the public may or may not be responded to by the board. All comments will be considered and a response will be forthcoming if and when appropriate. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding students and employees of the board are discouraged and will not be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights supported by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. Members of the public should consider their comments in light of the legal rights of those affected or identified in their comments and be aware that they are legally responsible and liable for those comments. Okay, Mr. Mayor, do we have anybody that would like to speak? Uh, not currently. I don't see any hands raised in our participant chat. Okay, we'll just give them 30 more seconds to make sure that they have time to figure out how to raise their hand if they do want to speak. Okay, we do have one from Lacey Fitzgerald Trongone. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Thank you. Lacey? 
Sorry, I thought I hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not good with this. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to clarify, Ms. Shanley. So the plan going forward is that a committee is going to be created. And who is going to be members of that committee? Um, we'll put it out there to the school community. So it could be parents, teachers. Okay, so just like the board okay. members. And this, is that different this time than it was last time? Is this something new that's going to happen in this process? Uh, we only, last time we only had a committee of the board. Okay. Okay. That's just, I just wanted to find out. So this is, so people will be a little bit more hands-on with this this time. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And still waiting. If anyone wants to raise their hand in the participant option, you can click on chat on the bottom and within the chat feature, there's an option to raise your hand. I think we're good. Okay. No one else, Mike? Nobody no. else. Okay. So at that time, um, may I have a, a motion to come out of public comment, please? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, at this point, um, we'll recess to close executive session to discuss legal matters before the for the Before and After Care Program for NJSA 10-4, Open Public Meetings Act. The subject matter may be discussed, subject matter discussed may be disclosed to the public if and when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Um, there may or may not be action taken when we come back to open. May I have a motion to go into closed? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, we will now go to closed. Um, hopefully we won't be uh, too long. We will try and keep you updated if we're gonna go over 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, board, we'll try and go straight in and keep this moving as quick as we can. Okay. See you all in the other room. Let me know when we're all set, please. Okay, it looks like everyone is in. I'd say let's give it 30 seconds for them to connect to audio. Okay, and how many people do we have at this point joining Currently, us? Currently, we have 44 total. Thank you. Are we set to begin, Mr. Mayor? I was going to say, it looks like everyone's connected. We're ready to go. Great. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion to reconvene the meeting in public? Motion. Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, we have reconvened in public. Um, obviously, we were discussing the um, situation with the before and after care. Um, and uh, the superintendent has recommended what she thinks is in the best interest of um, all of the families that need to use the before and after care program. 
And um, so I am going to bring to the floor BA101. Um, and I would like someone to make a motion to approve Alphabest to run the before aftercare program pending attorney review of contract. So motion. Are you a second, uh, Ms. Mahoney? Thank you. Um, is there any questions, discussions, comment on this at this point from the board? Angela? Yeah, I'd like to make a quick comment. Um, I just want, as part of the discussion, and obviously it's something we discussed for a long time, I just want to say that we have to take into consideration the um, needs of our parents who need before and after care. And um, I guess I could just say, say this, but we're going to form a committee for the long term uh, coming up in the next week. We're going to, uh, to, you know, for the long term plan, we're going to go out and see um, in the meantime what other options we have. But for now, we feel that these parents who need some kind of um, aftercare before and after, uh, this is a company that we can hire on an emergent basis pending attorney contract. But as much as we are uncomfortable with a lot of things that have been going on, we feel we cannot leave these parents high and dry and that we have to provide this service. Um, again, we're going to you know, form the committee next week. We're gonna have a long-term plan. That's definitely happening. You'll, you'll be hearing about that. But we have to provide, we, I feel, that this service is something that parents need in this time, especially with hybrid learning and with all the, all the different uh, work um, situations that people have. And I think, and that's why I'll be voting yes. Again, this is, a, this is our emergent plan. And then we're going to have a committee starting and we're going to come up, you know, you'll see it'll be out there. And it's something that um, we feel we can get the community together and trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward if it's with an outside company or whatever it is, we don't know who's gonna come out. You know, we don't know anything yet, but we, this is what we need to do now to help our families. I think the parents who use this service, it's up to them if they choose to do it or not, but that we have to have that option for them in this day and age. And that's my comment, thank you. Thank you. Um, I had something to say. yes, please. Um, I'm glad you said the I, because if I is not always we. Um, and in this situation, I think that we have to vote. We all should vote what's in the best interest of the students and their families. So we may differ on this, but in, in the end, it's what we want for our students and our families and to be happy and comfortable with the care that their children are being provided with. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else that um, has any comment, discussion, questions on the board? Through the chair. Yes. I agree with Angela when she says that this is a need that is needed for the community. However, I do not agree with what the plan is or the company. I think we have to make the, our community feel safe and I don't think that can be done with this company. So my vote is no. Okay, any other questions, comments? Yes, Michelle. Hi, I just wanna say, I also think that um, we definitely need to provide our families with the best possible care for their um, children um, in a safe environment um, that they could be comfortable with. So um, I just want everyone to keep that in mind when I vote this evening. But I do agree we need to have some kind of plan and that we need to have some kind of arrangement at the end of the day. Thank, Thank you. you. Any others? Yeah, through the chair. Uh, I will also be voting no, because in my opinion, we shouldn't be in this position in the first place, but unfortunately we are. So I stand by where I vote and that's my decision. Okay. Anyone else uh, before we move to the vote? Well, I'd like to say something, but I think I want to say it with my vote. Am I supposed to say it with my vote or, can, or should yeah. I say it? You don't have to. I don't have 
have to say it with my vote, I could say it now, or it doesn't make a difference. This right now we're open to discuss the motion okay. on the floor. Um, okay, then I'll say my piece now. Um, I do believe that we need to provide some service for the parents, and when I vote, I want the parents to know that that I don't want to leave them without any um, type of childcare. However, I'm not a hundred percent on this company. And in good conscience, I cannot vote for something that I don't feel 100% on. And this company, I have do not feel that on. So I would be voting no as well. Thank you. Um, if can, I, can I ask a question real quick? Um, so if this motion goes down, then our parents have no, have no care at this point. I just want to make that clear. That would be okay. correct. Um, that there's no, there will be no before and after care for our families. We don't know for how long. I just correct. want At people to understand point, that. In the emergency situation we are in, and under the guidelines of the county um, superintendent who has given us leeway to do this, um, at this point, this is the only option we have um, in order to bring in before and after care um, very quickly after Champions League. Um, so it, either this company comes in or our parents are going to have to find their own before and after care. Yes. Um, just to, I, I'm, I'm so, I feel for our parents because we're in a, a difficult situation. Um, and I, I don't want to leave anybody with no option. Um, so, um, is this the best company? I don't know. They're a reputable company who have been around, who are in many school districts, and who have successful programs. Um, I think that any company you look at might have something in their past, but that doesn't mean that going forward that they'll be a bad company. So I really want to provide our parents with an option um, if they they need it. Um, and it's it's really up to you if that's you know, your, your option, I really want to do that. And I'm really looking forward to exploring what our families really want from a before and after care program for the future. Um, and also to, you know, get, get ideas on what else is out there, what companies, what programs we might be able to bring in from the community. Um, but I, I don't want to leave our parents with no option right now. So um, I think that this company has a lot to offer, and um, I, I, I hope that we can, you know, give them a chance for our families. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, as, as Ms. Mooney said, this is a very reputable company. Um, they have uh, running many programs in schools in this area, as well as um, across the country. Uh, and they're a very reputable company that people like doing business with. Um, and again, I think we need to help the parents that need the help. That's uh, my personal point of view. If there's no other questions or comments, um, we'll go to vote. Steve, just real quick, there's a question in the chat. It says, can you all explain what is happening? We need more information. It's just that you could just explain what we're trying to do. Um, well, we already have a motion on the floor, and unfortunately, this is not public comment time. Um, I think we've explained what we can. Um, do you want to weigh in, um, Jessica? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you have made it clear, though. I think that I saw that earlier, Angela. So I think since then, you've answered the question, which is that uh, in order to appoint somebody emergently, you really only have this one option, um, and uh, otherwise, as of October 30th, you will not have any before care, after care um, for the community. Uh, that's what you're voting on right now. Okay. Um, if there's no more comment or discussion from the board, maybe we have roll call. I have, I have a question. Yes. So if now we decide and it's voted no, it's voted down, and the community comes back and says, they feel differently. Can we go back and hire this company? If they're willing. We can't, we can't control whether or not they're willing to 
come back, but legally, sure, you could vote again. May we have roll call, please, Ms. Cranley? Mrs. Barale. No. Mrs. Ottarelli. No. Mrs. Mahoney. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Mr. S um, Mr. Laurentino. Mrs. Ionello. No. Mrs. Robinson. Yes. Mrs. Roloff. No. Mr. Accomando. No. Vote is 4-4, four, four. it doesn't pass. It's just correct that it, it's 3-5. Oh, oh my gosh. And it does not pass. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, may we now have a motion um, to open the meeting for public comment? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, again, if you um, go and click, uh, I believe it's the chat button. Um, to raise your hand, um, then uh, Mike Mayor, Mr. Mayor will uh, call on you and uh, we can hear what you have to say. I will um, now read the wonderful paragraph to give you time to find the raising of the hand button. Residents are requested to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. In the event it appears the public comment portion of the meeting may exceed 45 minutes. The presiding officer may limit each statement made by a participant to five minutes duration. Issues raised by members of the public may or may not be responded to by the board. All comments will be considered and a response will be forthcoming if and when appropriate. The board asks members of the public to be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding students and employees of the board are discouraged and will not be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. Members of the public should consider their comments in light of the legal rights of those affected or identified in their comments, and be aware that they are legally responsible and liable for their comments. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'll leave you in charge um, to bring in anybody that has a hand raised. Sure thing. We already have one, and it is on the line of Jennifer Ween. Ween. I apologize if I mispronounced that. That's correct. Jennifer Ween. Hi, Jennifer Ween. Um, I'm not going to do in two weeks. My child needs before care. My older one is supposed to be at school every day at 8 o'clock. My little one can't start till 8.45, and I have to be online to teach my students from home by 8.30. I have no family in this area. Um, this is a really, really like, you're really screwing the parents bad. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do now, these two mornings a week that she has to be at school. <laughs> I can't be on the students and dropping her off. We have a very late start time. This is horrible. You should be ashamed of yourselves leaving the parents with no options. Thank you. And this public comment should have been before you voted. We, we did have public comment before we voted. Before you told us what you were doing. Before you screwed every single parent in this town who needs before care and before after care out of having choices. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I understand and I feel um, awful for you, honestly. Do we have anybody else that would like to speak, Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, from the line of Lacey Fitzgerald Trongone. You can now speak. Hi, um, just wondering um, if you can provide us or what more information you can provide us on how this is the only option that we have available how there aren't, I mean, I understand that this is obviously um, short notice between now and October 30th, but how is this the only option? It, has there been anything private that has been looked into or is it just these bigger companies? You know, Jennifer, I feel for you um, as pa other parents, 
feel for them. But, you know, I think that if we have members of the board that don't feel 100% comfortable after the situation that just happened, I just question how this is the only option that is available. So now what happens? Are the I parents- I can left? try to explain. I can try yeah. to explain. Okay. So, okay, uh, 18 months ago, we went out for an RFP. Um, and at that time, many companies submitted proposals. And we narrowed it down to, I believe, five or six. And then it went down to the top three. And then those three presented to a committee of the board. Uh, no, I think five pre pre presented to the committee of the board. And then the top three were chosen in order by points. You know, it's like a matrix and everybody gets to vote. The top three companies were only a like two points away from each other. It wasn't as if this company was, you know, the, the bottom of the barrel or something. And I think that's important to say because I'm not going to disparage this, this company. Um, so then what we were allowed to do by code was go to the county office and ask the county superintendent if he could, you know, would allow us to not have to go through the process of going out to, for an RFP again would we be able to refer to the second or third place um, business? Uh, and so that, that was what we did. And so um, we met with the second and third place businesses, both of which we liked in the final round, both of which were viable candidates in the final, final round. And the third place business was too small and could not sustain our program. But Alphabest is a larger company and was looking um, at the long-term, possible long-term opportunities and said that they could not only get us up and running by November 9th, but could provide us um, a reduction in price for parents who only wanted their children to stay till five, um, waive the registration fee and um, support us um, however they could. And so um, I made the recommendation to the board to hire Alphabest. Now, um, we asked our technology specialist to research the companies and see what he could find out there. Every company that, all six of the companies that we had originally looked at, all had something in their history of an employee behaving badly. Um, and now everybody, I believe people are skittish um, and fearful that somebody will you know, research uh, the name of a company and find something that they don't like. And of course, when you're large and you manage over 600 um, sites, th things happen. Um, there are terrible people out there and hopefully we hope that we never hire terrible people. But as we know ourselves, things happen. So um, the board, some members of the board, I don't wanna speak for them, did not feel that this was um, the right company to go with. So uh, they voted no. My, the reason I made the recommendation was not only because I do think Alphabest is a, is a good company. Um, and I have checked with the districts who, who are using them, some people that I know, um, and are very happy with them. And I was very concerned about leaving the parents without any care um, because champions will be leaving us on November 30th. I tried to get them to stay. Um, I'm sorry, October 30th. I tried to get them to stay for a few more weeks so I would have a little bit more time um, and, and they would not. So this is, this is where we are. So what happens now? What happens between now and when that the, the committee is made up and that, that date? So now, what we have the opportunity to do uh, during the next few months is to uh, form a committee or seek, seek information from the community. I mean, you know, maybe parents want to give their opinion, but don't necessarily have the time or can't commit to a committee. So seek some information from the community, school community as a whole, from the parents who are using the program now, see what's important to them. Um, go out for another RFP um, and go through the process all over again. It's just that you don't have the opportunity to go through that process right now if you need care for November. And obviously I have no idea how this works. Just going so within that, within that time process, the committee can say, okay, right. yeah, we'll, we'll take, we'll take um, recommend, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at, at the proposals that come through. You open the window, let's say for 60 days and you collect proposals and then you set a closing date and then you look at what's come through and you, you evaluate other options. For example, right. people have said, well, maybe their rec department could run, run something right. or maybe the YMCA could come in and run something, or maybe the moms could run something. You consider all of those options and then for a long-term decision, 
you can decide how you want to go. And then Alpha Best has the opportunity, let's say they're in there, they have the opportunity to show the parents what they're made of. And maybe the parents decide that they like them. And, and that voice becomes, uh, you know, worth listening to. So we, we do have options long term. But as far as right now, you need a company really who knows what they're doing, who's going to come in and be able to get you up and running so that the parents can take advantage of the care. Are the people that used to run this an option? Ch champions? No, like the, the ones that, that ran it before Champion. They're not an option for November 9th. Okay. Um, they'd certainly be an option for long term, but those were people who were hired by the board. That's what you're talking about? The yeah. Board yeah like, yes. So yeah. that would be a discussion that we would have, you know, for a long term decision, but it's certainly not something we could do for three weeks from now. Okay. Thank you. Actually, almost two weeks from now. <clears throat> Thank you. And our uh, next question comes from the line of Mr. Kulik. This is Merkulik. Yes, my apologies. That's okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. I must say I'm glad. Uh, Jennifer, I do feel your, um, I believe the first speaker was Jennifer. Yes. No fear. I am here to offer any parent who does not have before or aftercare, my house, my door, my car is wide open. I said it from the day one, every child out there is our child. I look at all these children as my children, as I would hope that when somebody sees my child, um, we'll take care of them. I was in your situation when my son got hurt. I was dumped, I was left out, I was without care. So I know how that, and I have three children. So I'm here for anybody, any mother, and I'm not looking for money. I am looking to help any family that needs drop off, pick up, secure a place for their child before, after, whatever it is. I am here and I'm so glad. And I hate to say, told you so. But I'm here for any parent that needs me. Feel free to contact me. Anyway. That's all. That's all. Thank and you. I, yep. That's a very generous offer. Thank you very much. And currently we have nobody else with their hand raised in the uh, participant chat. Uh, I take that back. Uh, we have one from Sarah. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Sarah Milnicki, 102 Claremont Ave. Um, so I fully understand um, that you didn't want to leave anybody in a lurch and I appreciate that. Um, and I understand why people voted it down because nobody knows anything about them. Um, and it is very disappointing because so many parents spoke up about champions and none of you listed, listened and now you didn't, nobody has a chance to research Alphabest. Although I, I did find some positive things actually just now. But will there be another vote in the future? Are you going to seek something out or you're just going to leave it until your permanent people come in place? I have to f I'll form the committee and we'll go from there. <laughs> and how quickly can you get the, like, the bid advertisement out? Like how, how, what does that normally take? Pretty quickly. I just feel bad. I, Champions was so horrible. I found other means and I'm grateful that I have the other means. But I, and I, I just, I feel for all the parents that don't have any other means, you know, and yeah, it just, if you, if you guys just would have listened in the first place, we wouldn't have been in this situation. So that, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no hands raised at this time. Okay. And, uh, back to Sarah. Sorry, uh, just one other question. Is there any way the breakfast pro pro program can come back, at least for the before care option? Frank Lemon Smith had the breakfast program. Yeah, you know, what we do is send the breakfast pro send the breakfast home with the students with their lunch for the next day for breakfast. Right, no, no, I, I understand that, but that also provided uh, a little bit of before care. So for me, I use I use breakfast because I didn't need seven, I didn't need a seven o'clock. I only needed a few minutes before the kids went in. Yeah, well, we're not, currently we're not serving meals within the schools. Okay. Just thought I'd ask, thank you. Yeah. Do we have anyone else, Mr. Mayor? Uh, currently, we do not have anyone with their hand raised. And it's, they wait for me. Uh, we have one from Barbara Deradorian. 
Yes, hi, I, uh, Barbara Dara Dorian, 154 Cambridge Avenue. Um, I just wanted to know how many parents are being, or how many children are being impacted now? How many kids do you have in the program? I'm just curious. Uh, uh, oh, it depends on the day and it depends on like the blue day, the gold day are different. Mondays are different. Some do just before care, some after care. So, I mean, we have well over 60 students who are registered, whether or not they're using it every day. Or That's across all the schools? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a question from uh, Jennifer Ween. So you came to the board with one option tonight. Well, that I, let me, I'm just trying to get this clear. You came yeah. to them with one option, nothing else. Well, I so it was do this or everybody's just forget it out of luck. Well, no, I tried to, I explained to the board that it, <clears throat> what the code is and what we were, what, what our options were for an emergent, you know, a mid-year Option. Let me just clarify this because I don't I want to make sure this because if the code doesn't say that you only can use the last three. Okay. That's what one. that's what I received from the, the guidance. The county must have told you that. Yes, they said they spoke to someone in Trenton. There you go. So <clears> that's clear because the yes. code itself actually doesn't say that. So I don't want the public to go researching it and then come back and say that we we so, let so the yeah. county is telling us and we have to do what the county says. And the county is saying that they will only allow this, just to be clear. That, that, that he spoke to someone and he, he reached out to someone in Trenton and this was the, this is what he came back to me with. Yes. I am completely floored. I never in a million years thought you're gonna leave these kids with no option. You know, we're going into the winter, so walking to school isn't even an option now. Yeah. <laughs> Most of you are parents. I don't understand how you can just screw all of the working parents in this town. <laughs> I, I can't. Thank you for voicing your concern. Um, our next uh, question comes from Kristen Stam. Hi, yes, Kristen Stam, 15 Chelsea Drive. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to know, I, I completely understand the RFP process. If I could ask um, the reason for the initial RFP, and then my second question is, once the second RFP will be done, or the, the next one after the committee is formed, um, how long is that contract in place typically? If that's a set time frame. Um, well, the contract, gen generally you set a contract annually and then you reapprove contracts annually. So like the food service or the sub service, they're renewed every year. Um, how, what was the first question? Why this, why we had an RFP where champions was selected. Like, I don't know why we went away from the board members to initiate the RFP. Was that a county thing? Like, hey, it's been X amount of years, you need to RFP this no, um, when you use, when you have your own program, you don't have to be part of the RFP process. You could do it internally. So we had, um, we didn't, we no longer had the community school. We were, you know, we had a secretary who was running the community school and who was running um, before and after care and who um, retired and we did not have the full community school program that we used to have. Um, we had some concerns about the program, uh, training, safety, things like that. Uh, we had some problems with meeting the needs of all of our students and the fact that that was pretty much it. And meeting the needs of all the students became a real challenge. Okay. Well... I guess I would say this is a completely um, more difficult challenge, unfortunately. Thank you. We did try to create a program in-house and that did not work. A more legit, comprehensive and complete program and it, that did not work. 
we had a very short timeline we were working on and we had to make a decision before the end of the school year and that was when we voted on champions thank you thank you uh currently we have no one with their hand up in the chat i i mistake it again uh back to sarah Hi, Sarah Malnicki, 102 Claremont Ave. I just have a question with what you just said about regarding to going to champions in the first place. Wasn't a plan presented to, um, I don't know if it was to the full board or just administration, about how to increase the revenue while keeping it in-house and also eliminating the people that ran it? They would, they would leave and you could um, still have ran it in-house and been more profitable for you and you guys turned that down? We, we actually had some real problems with the bookkeeping um, so that was it that was an issue the management of the program was an issue so we tried to change we tried to re redo the way we were doing things and um, when it ran under Franklin you had over 70 to 80 kids registered and I anytime I walked in on champions there was under 20 kids at Franklin so I'm guessing you had way less so then you you clearly you were you were when it ran under Saddlebrook, you were meeting the needs of the students and Champions was not meeting the needs of the students. And also how many serious injuries happened under Champions? I understand there's minor injuries all the time, no matter how safe any program is, there's gonna be a broken bone here or there, but how many serious injuries occurred under Champions just at Franklin School and my child was uh, had four, went four years under the whatever we call community school, whatever it was called under Saddlebrook, no serious injuries, but then, um, Severe head injuries, stitches, broken finger, broken arm, kids getting okay. choked, all this stuff. So I, I think it's important, Mrs. Milnicki, I'm, it's very important that we not say things that you cannot verify because I have asked to review the reports. There was no broken finger. There was no broken arm. There were two other incidents that took place when I was on medical leave, and I believe they happened within like a week of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I have reviewed that, but I, I think it's important that, and, and I'm, I, you work in a school, and I think you know that sometimes the public doesn't know everything that you know. And you have to assume that there are situations that occurred that needed to be, to be addressed internally, and that was part of our decision to make the change. And that's really all I can tell you. Um, I, there, were is there were plenty of things that, took place that I'm sure you did not know about. You went in, in and out of Franklin every day. It's not the only school and the only program that we have. Um, and that's really all I can say is that there were things that I'm sure you were not aware of. Okay, but you were presented with a program, a way to you were presented with a plan to get rid to maintain it under Saddlebrook. Wait and a minute, please. Can I, can, I wasn't presented with the plan. I created the plan. Mi yes, okay. Miss, Miss Salma and I sat down with members who were currently working the program. We created a plan. We even named the program. We came up with a logo for the program. We had training, training lined up for the program, CPR training, choking training, safety training. We had drills. We, I mean, we had a full blown plan and two people who for the hot moment we're willing to take over the program and run it right. I said, if we're going to run it in house, we need to do it properly. And then the, that was in April to May. We tabled champions, I believe in April. We were going to approve this, the Falcon's Nest, in May. Those people backed out. I then did not have time because we needed to, if we were going outside, we needed licensing and all sorts of other things and hiring, et cetera. So we put champions back on the agenda in June, I believe, so that it could be up and running for September and we couldn't have it run, we, they couldn't run for the summer. The hope was that they'd be able to run for the summer. That's why we were trying to approve in April. So I presented a bona fide before and after care program so that it could be, I had so many complaints. You didn't complain, but other people did. So you just have to understand that it's not only your school that your children in, your voice, your perspective. If, I, if there were 60 parents there, there were 
parents in other buildings too. So please understand that there's much more to this that I'm sure the public knows or, or, or has seen or heard. And I was trying to make it better. Um, obviously the public is willing to comment on whatever you want. Um, so please, I'm not trying to stop anybody from commenting. However, personally, I think it is important to, although learn from lessons from the past, I think it's important right now that we focus on the present and going forward instead of rehashing things that are over, done with. Um, Champions is out of the door on October 30th. I doubt they will ever return to Saddlebrook, um, even when my great grandchildren are here. Um, so comment on anything you want. Um, it's just a suggestion I have for everyone. I understand. I just was a little upset at what was said because I know there was a plan in pl presented prior to the falcon nest coming about. I was told from people that there was something presented sacrificing their own job and with people retiring a way to make it profitable and keep it in house. Well, I don't. I would love to see a copy of that because I okay. have nobody ever gave me a plan. Okay. I would love to see a copy of that. I'll, I'll see if I can get it. I just was speaking yeah. to other people, but yeah, I'd love to see it. No it's plan just, came to me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to go back to the line of Ms. Merkulik. Hopefully I got it right that time. You get a name, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I do want to echo Sarah, and I do agree. We should just move forward. But I do agree with Sarah. Every meeting I came, it was all about profit. And yes, I do agree. I mean, I do, I remember when Ms. Shanley offered this new Saddlebrook program, um, other people, had, the people that were, our people didn't have a choice. They were kind of basically forced out. Doesn't matter, past is past. We were presented with the profit. We offered to pay more, it didn't work. Past is past. So let's make it work. Let's pick a company, let's vote, let's have a hearing, let's have a community. I mean, but hear us, hear us. We were there to tell you no. We were there to tell you nothing was broken. There's issues everywhere. I'm sure there's issues with everyone else's job in this meeting. Everybody has an issue in their family. At work. We all have issues. But let's just hear us as parents because we need this. I have been without before and after care since November. Yeah, you figure it out, love goes on things happen, figure it out. But we shouldn't be forced to figure things out. We, we pay for everything. We, I mean, we need help. We're parents. We, we, you're all parents. Your kids might be grown and you probably forgot how it is to be in diapers and drop off and pick up. But go back to that. We need help and we need your help. And that's why you're there. You promised us to be there for the children. Be there for us too. And listen to us. Our voices are there because we're there every day. You're in your office. And I don't remember when was the last time I came to the meeting and asked the question, when was the last time you took a tour of Franklin when Ms. Debbie and that program was there? I cannot speak for any other school. I speak for my Franklin school. So my question never got answered. Yeah, you were all selling shampoo care. I'm done with them. But it bothers me because when I said, when was the last time you toured our school? When was the last time you were there to check everything out? Nobody had an answer for that. Past is past. I, I, again, we keep dwelling because it just hurts so much. We had something that was working. Again, I repeat myself, people, whoever needs help, I'm here for you. I am going to be here for you. Whatever. That lady that was crying, I feel for you. That was me in November for a month until I figured it out. You'll figure it out, but I'm here for you now. That's all. Thank you. And again, a very generous offer. Any lady, any parent, anything, I'm here morning to night. No compensation. Help until we figure it out and we will. But listen to us. That is our plan. Thank you. And next we have iPhone. Oh, hi. Um, Oksana, 527 Steinway Road. So I would like to know how will you form the committee? Uh, how will you select the members of the committee? 
But I will definitely put out an interest inventory first and find out um, who's interested. And even if you can't be part of the committee, I will seek um, input from all the community, uh, school community members. And then um, how will I choose? I guess based on what the people say and why, why they wanna be part of the community. And I will prioritize obviously parents um, who are utilizing the program first. And um, I'll have representatives from all, all of the schools and the board. Because I would like to be a part of the committee, if possible, at least to be considered. My daughter was one of the three kids who attended aftercare on Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. and she was the only girl. And this is the first year she attended because I felt like she wanted to socialize more. So what really bothered me in this program, and I would like to share my input for for you to choose the future programs it is the response the question that i would like you to to ask the companies to come how do you respond to situations like this up to this day champions have not sent an email they have not updated the phone number so in order for me to get through to the program i need to call christina who's the manager who responds within an hour or two hours so there is no way unless you're physically there so that is a very important question for me as a parent. I need to be able to know what are exact policies and procedures and how are they enforced? Because right now, like we're in the world where anybody can change a phone number in one hour since that occurrence, they do not have a designated phone number to Franklin Aftercare. Uh, number two, um, I, I'm bothered. My daughter had an incident in school with the, the guy who was arrested, meaning like, uh, she had her finger injured and he didn't call me because their policy is unless your your head is hurt or like you, you something broken they do not call I want to know this was a soft tissue injury and uh, her finger was swelling nobody called me so uh, as a parent I want to know the school calls me if the bandit is put on on her this is what I would want to have from the program that takes care of my child Okay, I didn't hear your last name. I just heard Oksana. Uh, Sharmita. Can you spell that? S-H-E-R-E-M-E-T-A. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next we have Carmen. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Okay. Thank you. This is Amanda Penna, 341 Wilson Street. Go ahead, Amanda. Okay. Thank you. So I agree with what everyone is saying as far as, you know, past is the past and we should absolutely move on. I mean, these parents need care. So at this point, um, you know, it's not worth too much time to rehash old events, but um, being that I was the administrator of the program when it was in-house from 2013 to 2019, I just wanted to say that I hope the insinuation um, isn't that the old program was inundated with problems to the point um, that that was the reason that, that it needed to close down. Um, I don't know what is um, allowable for me to say being that you know I was privy to information regarding the real reasons that the program closed um, as an employee but I was under the impression that they were financial in nature um, that they had to do with minimum wage increase stop me if I say anything that could potentially be any type of breach of contract of confidentiality or anything like that um, that it was about financial issues um, concerning minimum wage increase and how we couldn't sustain the program and how Carmen, um, Carmen, Carmen let me just stop you and say that um, I, I don't know what you're going to say <laughs> so it's impossible it's impossible for me to stop you before you say something that you shouldn't um, okay so you're kind of you're as as Mr. Quinn announced before public comment, you're, you're on your own here. So if you say something- I'll be careful. I'll be very careful. Okay. Okay. Um, and also the other reason was that we had a, a lot of, you know, students with IEPs and because the program was in-house that it, there was a potential that we would then have to provide them with one-on-one um, -on -one aids that we might not be able to sustain that cost um, if that got written into people's IEPs, but with an outside program that, um, that then they wouldn't have to provide these were the different reasons that I was given. Um, 
I, and I wasn't fully in disagreement that, that it might be a, a good idea to, to do something different, but I, I'm kind of catching the end, the end uh, part of the conversation here. And it kind of sounds like the, the insinuation was that there were these tremendous problems. And I had such an open line of communication with the parents um, through email, through, through phone, through my cell phone, um, through, through conversations we had in person. And there was always such an open line of communication that I, I'm reluctant to believe that there were huge problems that were not brought to my attention if they were brought over my head um, to the administrative team because I was also in communication with all of our administrators and I would find it to be very strange if they knew of, of huge problems and then didn't communicate them back to me. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to say. Um, the other thing is that, you know, I, I won't name names because obviously that's inappropriate to do, but I do believe that, you know, I, I understand kind of what was going on when Miss um, Shanley was trying to keep the program in house with existing employees or one existing employee is the only one that I really know of and I won't name her, but I will say that uh, I believe that there's another side to that story. I don't like the insinuation that she backed out. Um, she loved the program and the children fiercely um, and she might have changed her mind because of the terms that she was given and, and you know, the specific circumstances. So I don't think it's really fair to just flat out say that it was just, you know, champions was chosen because this person backed out. I don't feel that that's fair. Um, and I will also say that, you know, as far as, as the idea that uh, Sarah brought up about keeping the program in house, she's definitely talking about a plan that I presented um, very clearly to Mr. Karate. So um, Mrs. Shanley, I know I didn't speak directly to you. I spoke directly to him because it was a very um, detailed plan to keep the program in-house without my position, but with teachers running the programs at um, all schools in the supervisory positions. And we, we did, again, I will not name a name, but we did have a teacher um, from Franklin School offer to run the entire program. So if Mr. Karate, Mr. Karate shot that down for me um, without it ever getting to you, it sounds like he never shared it with you, but that was, that was brought up. Um, and now that the people that were using the program are left with no other choice, I think that it might be a good idea, at least temporarily, to hand it over to willing teachers at each school. I mean, they know the kids, they know the parents, We might have lost you. Hello. And minimum wage increases, but at least temporarily, I don't understand why the teachers wouldn't be able to to do this. Um, I can explain I, and I'm not why. expecting. Okay. I can explain why. So right now, our students go into aftercare at one o'clock, and everybody is still working. So we do not have teachers or paras available to provide services from one o'clock until the end of the official school day because they're all still working with remote students. Well, that's definitely a, a coronavirus 2020 Exactly, situation. issue, yes it is, yeah. yes it is. So that, that's why it can't, it can't just happen now. Right, that's understandable. So I just wanted to share um, you know, my perspective on those, those other issues. Uh, again, so, I'm not looking for an explanation nor am Ms. I looking Penna. for anybody to move backwards, but. No, but Ms. Penna, you sat with me in my office few times about different issues. Why didn't you bring that plan to me? I brought that plan to you after I returned. When I was out on maternity leave, the program was pretty much, the decision was made to disassemble the program. I was contacted while on maternity leave to call and communicate with all of the existing employees and let them know that the program was probably going to be outsourced. Um, as a last ditch effort after the plan that you discussed with the employee who, again, I'm not going to name, after that fell apart uh, and I was leaving anyway, I, as a parent in the district, started to really think about what the different parents started to say at the board meeting, most specifically the parent who, um, you know, is a detective and brought up a list of all these different offenses. That was very scary. So at that point, I brought a financial plan to Mr. Karate, and I was told that, that that had absolutely, there was no way of doing it. 
So I, I don't know what the timeline looked like on that, but the question I asked you was, since, since you had talked to me other times about other things, why didn't you come to me? If you really want me to answer that, frankly, it's because I felt that you were not receptive at all to anything that I was talking about. Um, I offered my assistance um, with the new program when we were transferring everything over to Champions in writing. I do still have those emails. I offered to communicate with, uh, with Gabriella at that point. I offered to communicate with you and I was actually completely eliminated from this. The, the plans that you were making with this other employee, I was actually completely excluded from it. Um, I, I felt that my input was not valuable. I, I felt that I was not part of the process. And as a matter of fact, I was also uh, told that the, I was not even supposed to know that it was kind of a secret that this other person was going to be taking over. It wasn't a secret. Well, no, it wasn't a secret because I knew, but, but I certainly never heard anything. I, I mean, you never communicated this new plan about the, the falcon's nest, that nothing, nothing about that. I was never included. It didn't, it didn't come to fruition, so. Okay, but, but I wasn't included when the plans were being made. I would have been nice to be included because I do feel that, you know, uh, I had and still have valuable input about what this program uh, needs. And again, I'm completely sympathetic to the board's position and your position and why you might have needed to, you know, have the program not be under the umbrella of the Board of Education for these different financial and legal reasons. But I did feel that the communication was lacking. Um, and I also feel that, you know, the way that the way that things went down at the very end, you know, right up to my very last day of employment, I, I feel like it was very uh, I don't know if you're fully aware of it, but it was very unprofessional on Mr. Karate's end, if you'd like to, to speak. I'm not going to have you disparage Mr. Karate. No, I'm not going to disparage him. You can't call him. I'm not, I'm not going to disparage him. Oh, okay, him. so I'm not disparaging him, but then I will, I will speak, I will say what, you know, what I'm talking about is that, you know, I was illegally in writing, in writing threatened to not be paid my last paycheck. Okay. This mm -hmm. I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm going yeah. to ask you to take this up with me privately. Oh, okay. Well, if you'd want, if you'd like to talk about it, you can. If not, I mean, I'm not going to be contacting you about it because it's water under the bridge for me at this point. I just feel that the it's community obviously not if know. you're bringing it up at a public meeting. So yeah, I will. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up at a public meeting because it. I feel that you're being unfair to the program as it existed previously, and I don't feel that the truth is really being represented. So I'm trying you know, to be. You know very well, Miss Penna, that as an employee of the district, that there are plenty of things that I, I cannot say in public. I do, I, of course. Exactly. So that's just the Of course. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I am letting you know that I do not have anything that I have done or participated in as part of my tenure in the district that I would be in any way opposed to the public knowing. I, I'm not talking about you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to go back to the line of uh, Jennifer Ween. Okay, so you, the teachers can't do aftercare. Why can't they do before care? Why can't that be a stipend position that's offered? They're not responsible for students in the morning. Or at least offer the kids who are coming in for TAG the ability to come in on the day they have TAG. I, I don't even know. Just. It, does, it doesn't solve our aftercare issue, even if it's no, it doesn't. But it solves half of the issue. It it doesn't solve half of the issue. It it solves an it solves an hour, but we have another six hours in the afternoon, or five hours in the afternoon, and full days on Mondays. So it, so it does doesn't solve what, the full. What's the reason we're not even considering it for, for before? And we're not considering it because we can't get it off the ground by November 9th. You do a lot of things that fast. A whole lot of things happen fast. Where there's um, a will, there's a way. Mrs. Ween, I've discussed all of the constraints with the board. I hope they really take this into consideration when your contract's up for renewal in the spring. Um, I made a recommendation. I made a recommendation here tonight. We could have had. Please, you know. please keep this from being um, personal and. Um, you know, people that have spoke once, please make sure that people that haven't spoke have the chance first. Um, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you. Uh, we're going to go back to the line of Barbara Deradorian. Yes, Barbara Deradorian, 154 Cambridge Avenue. Um, it doesn't affect me because I don't have children in aftercare or before care, but I, I've been through that and I just really feel that you're leaving the parents in a serious lurch. Um, I, I, in this day and age during a pandemic, people are, you know, just trying to keep their jobs and you're just putting them in an impossible situation by not providing care, you know, even if it's for a month or two. Um, I don't know, you can look into getting substitute teachers, you can get permanent substitute teachers in, possibly, I, you know, but I have to feel it, that it's just something. So that you know, it's important that you know, I did, I did look into that. It's very difficult to get substitute teachers till six o'clock. Well, I just wanted you to know, I did look into that. And it's, and, right. it's, and it's also difficult to get them at 7.15 in the morning. So, you know, it's, we, I, I, like I said, I did present all of the constraints to the board. It's just, you're really leaving parents in a really impossible situation. And I feel for them. Um, you know, I we, do too. We understand that um, the board was given an option and the board voted. Um, what about it's talking really to the parents of these 60 children that you have in before and after uh, before and after care um, to see you know what their feelings like somebody mentioned it before why couldn't the public speak up beforehand like we didn't really know what was going on we didn't know you were going to vote for nothing that you know you'd have nothing available um, I just have a feeling when we get off this this call, you're going to have outraged parents. I mean, Jennifer is one that happens to be on the line, but all these parents are going to be in a real, real bad situation, and I, I think you're going to have an uprising, quite honestly. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Do we have anybody that hasn't already spoken um, that would like to speak at this point? Uh, currently, we do not. Uh, okay. Yes, we do. Uh, the line of Ryan Callie. Hi, how's it going? My name is Ryan Callie. I live at 134 Skillman Terrace. Um, I currently work for Champions at the uh, Smith School. I actually worked for the Southbrook Board of Education ever since I was 16 years old. I started volunteering and I worked my up, way up. When the company got outsourced. I had kind of no choice but to apply for Champions. And luckily I got the job at Smith and met a lot of great teachers, a lot of great kids, a lot of great staff. Um, going back to the point that I think someone mentioned before, there are teachers that are in the building at 7 a.m. They're supposed to be overseeing the champion staff now due to everything that's going on. So there definitely is possible that people can be there. I know obviously stuff is going on. I totally understand that. Um, and there are teachers that come at one o'clock every day to oversee mine and my coworker make sure that everything is in check. Um, so if there's people available, I think that is an option to throw out there just to help these parents out that need our service every day. Um, it's really not fair to them. I know it doesn't really affect me. I mean, it doesn't wake, I'm losing my job next Friday, but I still don't wanna see these parents who I've grown a close connection with and kids lose our service. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And just, just so that you know, Ryan, so teachers um, for a two week period, the board agreed that we would offer teachers a stipend um, to cover. Um, and we also have some paraprofessionals uh, who are covering and then we're using substitutes to cover for the paraprofessionals. So it does cause a bit of a domino effect. I don't want you to think that these people just don't have assignments and are free to do what they're doing. Um, they're, they made a commitment for you know two weeks because it was a, a short term commitment. Um, and um, Alpha, Alpha Best, who was the company that was coming in, did say that they would be willing to interview and hire the people that we currently have so that nobody would you know, potentially lose a job. Um, and so I did consider that as far as the, the staff goes in, in hoping to, to retain good people. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, and um, we've hit that point of going over 45 minutes. Um, so I'm going to ask that everyone um, please try and keep the five minutes. And currently we have Emily uh, Sikamatelis. 
Hi, Emily Scamatella, 86 Bell Avenue. Um, my heart goes out to all these parents that tried to warn the board originally, and I don't understand why um, I feel like the parents are not being listened to, whether it's on any type of issue. We tell you what our kids need. We know our kids. We tell you what we need as a community, and you are supposed to be representing us, and yet it falls on deaf ears, and now we're in a situation making it very difficult both for parents and for children who need to get to school. Children who need to be with other children and be around so you know some kind of normalcy will now have to probably be virtual once again 100% so that they could figure out what's going on and I don't think that patronizing parents and telling them that you understand is the right way to do it because you don't understand you're not in that position and to the parents who are going through this right now. I'm offering anybody that I can help, I will help, just reach out to me. I'm just so disappointed. It's like a continuous thing against our children. You know, be there for our children. You say you're there for our children, then listen to us and be there for our children because you're failing our children on so many levels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm checking to make sure no one else has their hand up. Thank you. Okay, at this point, um, I have a motion to um, close the meeting for public comment. I moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, um, we are now close to public comment. Um, I guess the next thing is, may I have a uh, motion to adjourn the movie, movie. A motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Through Second. the chair, can I, can I say anything right mm -hmm. now or not allowed to? I mean, can um, I just make a comment? Yes. Well, there's actually a motion on the table now, but. Okay, so I tried to. No, you, you know, wait, you, can I have a motion to table the motion that's on the table? <laughs> no, no, no. You could, you could just say, do you have any comments? Do you have Fire any comments test. before we adjourn the meeting? Thank you. I have a quick comment. Thank you. Um, decisions that are made by the board are not made easily, and we take a lot of time, and we deliberate, and we talk about all the pros and cons. We are not. We can't predict the future. We can't do a lot of things. We are all here for your children and I'm here for your children. What I wanna say is that um, the motion on the table and what I said previously was that if we, this went down, the parents would be left without any kind of um, aftercare or before care. It was going to be something that the attorney had to look at the contract anyway. It wasn't like written in stone. We had to make sure everything was to what we needed to do. And the other part of this is um, we want to do the, what's best for the children. We always have. And I want to say one more thing that I voted to do this so that parents are not left high and dry. I voted because I care about the children. I'm sure other board members do too. I'm not saying they don't care about the children, but I know what, what it's like because I was a working parent since my kids were three months old. So I know what it's like to need after care and before care. So in the end, I'm going to say this. If we vote to keep this comp to get this company now for the, for the short term, it was a short term decision, not forever, for five years, and we can be able to do, provide this service that these parents need, I think that's the most important thing we can do tonight. And I know people don't want outside companies or whatever, but this is our only option because we, need, we have two weeks to do this. We're going to start the committee next week. We're going to put out the RFPs and do all that immediately. But this is an interim solution to help our parents. And I'm just disappointed that I, I, I'm not great on outside companies either, but I'm disappointed because we need to really help our families right now. I'm sorry. And that's why. I have to say. Does anybody else have any comments they would like to share? Through the chair, I do. I was one that voted no, and I stand by what I vote, and I just wish 
the parents who are upset, I totally understand where you're coming from, but I just want everybody to Google this company and then still say we did the wrong thing. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comment? Okay. Um, if that is the case, we have a motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting. Um, and we have the second. If there's no other comment or discussion at this point, um, all in favor of adjourning the meeting? Say aye. Any opposed? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Um, thank you all for everyone um, that has attended. And uh, I understand there is frustration among um, some. And um, please know that all of the board members do actually listen, whether they um, vote you want, the way you, they, you want them to or not, we all do listen to you. Um, on that, have a great night. And our next meeting is in a couple of weeks.